today we shall deal with the topic philosophy of coaching when the word philosophy comes in it means is the thought which cannot be visualized now science and philosophy when you consider these two things science starts with what is in existence whereas philosophy starts from the thing which is not visible but this is a thought this is a feeling which the coach or an individual has to visualize the thing and on the basis of his thought feeling he gradually comes towards the normal thing or the existing thing when we talk of philosophy of coaching two different individual or the coach is different because of his thought or philosophy that means the approach is different although the principles of training and coaching are the same but approach of two different coach is different and that's the reason why two different coach thinks in different way what is the difference the difference is their order of priorities order of priorities means which component or which aspect or which element the coach is going to give the priority 1 2 3 the other coach also gives the same importance but the order may be different that is the reason why we find the difference between two coaches now if you think about the coaching a coach is a professional head and for this purpose he has been trained and equipped by different institutions so that the coaches can deliver the goods on the field they are assigned to look there is a difference between a doctor and a coach both are aiming for the welfare of the human being whenever a patient goes to a doctor he confesses the doctor these are the problems this is what he is facing this is what how it is disturbing his health and on the basis of that doctor used to refer the patient for certain investigations and as soon as this investigation report comes in the doctor can take the remedial measures whereas in case of a coach the players never confess or when they don't know what are their deficiencies as such so what is to be done then the coach himself used to investigate through certain tests to know exactly what the problem is and accordingly he is to take certain measures so that the players become fit and his improvement becomes satisfactory and for this reason the coach cannot refer the player to any laboratory as such there is no laboratory available so what is to be done the coach himself on the basis of his knowledge and experience he used to conduct certain tests to collect certain ob- objective information about a player what is his strong points what is his weak points and what the measures are to be taken so that the player when he will be performing the activity or when he will be ready for playing a match he will be in a position to deliver the goods again whenever we are preparing a player as a coach what happens we are preparing today keeping in mind when he will be prepared maybe after 6 7 8 years so what will be the demand at that time whether the potential of this player is adequate enough sufficient enough to groom him up to that level so that he can deliver the goods during that period and he becomes effective so as a coach he must believe on his own philosophy and proceed accordingly so that he can do justice to the players because once the day is gone it will never come back so every step 
on the part of the coach is very, very important. And he must understand that he is dealing with human being, not a robot. And at the same time, he must also understand that the progress or the development of any individual is not a constant thing. There might be some problems coming in between. Keeping all these things in mind, he has to chalk out his training or planning so that whatever the curriculum he undertakes are proved to be effective. Now the quality of his curriculum or his training materials and how the players are reacting to those curriculum, how the players are taking that curriculum, both will reflect in the performance in future. So the job of the coach is very delicate and always he is responsible for the result. So everybody expects that the coach will do justice and he must come up with the expectation not only of the players, of the society, the organizers, but to himself also. So, the coach has to be very, very careful while designing his training curriculum, handling his players, so that there is no scope of any breakdown in between. And for this, he must take care of the welfare or well-being of each and every player, irrespective of his status, his caste, or creed, because he is responsible for each and every individual of his squad. And after the development in performance, individual performance I'm talking about, their performance need to be combined so that the players play like a unit during the course of actual competition. Now normally in English speaking countries, the coach, what you know here in India, is known as the manager. In all other countries, the coach is known as coach, not as manager, whatever it is. In sports, the coach is like an institution because he prepares, instructs, and directs all the proceedings on and off the field. So that whatever he does, it has been reflected when the players are playing during actual competition. So whatever he has prepared during preparation or whatever effort he has made and how much he could get it from the boys will be reflected in the competition. He usually is a professional head and in many places the coach is known as a teacher, as a guide and a philosopher. He is actually the authority of the team. He has the right to take every decision for the interest of each individual and of the team. He must be able to educate his players, each and every individual, that they are the part and parcel of the team. So whatever they will be doing during the course of play should be for the interest of the team, not for individual brilliance. Because if any individual is thinking that he is beyond and above the team, then it is harmful for the performance of the team. Each and every individual must be ready to contribute his share for the interest of the team. And that is the job of the coach to make the people or the players understand what is expected from an individual to contribute for the benefit of the team. And for this, his appearance, his behavior, and his approach to the coaching, to the players, to the society is very, very important. He must not give 
any impression which gives wrong or incorrect. So his impression should always be positive that yes, he is doing something, he is responsible and whatever he is doing for the benefit of the players as well as for the team. As a teacher, what he does, he imparts knowledge, skills and his ideas. So he should be able to communicate all these things or instill in the mind of the players that he is sharing certain knowledge which are beneficial for the players and the team. As a trainer, what he does, he improves the fitness of each and every individual basing on the demand of the game, the position in which a player is playing, that is his functional position, and of course, keeping in mind his capabilities. As an instructor, he regulates the practice. Now, how much practice one should do, how many repetitions, what should be its intensity, and how much rest should be given. This everything is to be regulated by the coach as an instructor. He also acts as a motivator. What he is motivating? He is generating positive attitude towards training and the game. Each and every individual, if he wants to improve his performance, or if he wants to reach to elite level, or if he wants to establish himself in any profession, his attitude must be positive. Only thing, as a coach, he should keep on motivating the players so that the players' attitude become positive. Unless the players take it in a positive way, whatever the curriculum or the programs are being designed for the players, it, if it is not being taken positively, no amount of effort will be in a position to produce better results or the progress will be hampered. So, both the coach should motivate the players or educate the players in such a way or design his curriculum in such a way that itself is motivating and the players become confident. Yes, whatever the things are being asked to do, they are good, beneficial for us and once they are doing it and they are finding that they are improving, automatically the attitude will become positive. Without positive attitude, because ultimately the players will have to put their wholehearted effort for the improvement. Otherwise, no amount of what you call incentive or words or whatever it is will not be able to improve the quality of the players. Now, as a disciplinarian, he instills discipline. Now, the discipline is not meant only on the field. It should be off the field also. If a player is disciplined on the field, he carries out every movement and he is very punctual, he does everything, whatever the coach says, is very good, but off the field, he is in discipline. That will be reflected in his performance on the field, obviously. One cannot hide it, one cannot escape it. So, one should be disciplined in true sense and spirit. As a manager, what he does, he plans and organizes the scheduled curriculum. He ensures that the program is carried out as per the principles and requirement of the players. So he, as a manager, he manages everything. The first he plans, then he implements the plan. And then he also looks after, ensures that the planning or the curriculums are being implemented in proper fashion in order to ensure that the players are improving. Whatever the time is spent on this are effective or fruitful. As an administrator, he maintains discipline and looks after the well-being of the player. As you all know it, Unless we look after the welfare or well-being of our players, they are not going to deliver the goods up to the level of our expectation. So it is the both way. We must look after the welfare of the players as a guardian, as a parental figure, 
And in turn, we should expect that players will also do the wholehearted effort for the interest of the team. As a friend, he supports the player in instilling confidence and always stand by them. Now, confidence means one must know what is he, how much he can do, and what is expected from him. So that helps to perform well. Unless he knows what is his capability, what is his potentiality, obviously he will not be confident. He will always be feeling, oh, I cannot do that. Oh, I cannot carry this out. So as a coach, his curriculum should be such that it suits the quality or the demand of the player. And that automatically will instill self-confidence because if he can perform the task correctly, successfully, that automatically will help or build confidence in him. So we must not ask the player to do something which is not within his capability. He should be asked to do what he can do and we must tell them what is the next so that he automatically feels yes this much I can do that much also I will try. So this confidence one should have so he will keep on trying. As a friend he supports the player in instilling self confidence and at the same time always stand by them. Sometimes it may so happen the players despite good preparation they are not in a position to deliver the goods. They might not be getting success. It may so happen but they, at that time it is the duty of the coach to stand by the players. Yes, you have tried your level best, remaining thing Whatever you could not do, that is rest with me. So she always should stand by them, not scapegoating the players. Always give support to the player, particularly when they are in need of your support as a coach. As a scientist, he analyzes, evaluates, and initiates remedial step for effective improvement. Now, analyzing is some feels that it is only wasting of time, rather we should keep on doing performing activities, repeating activities. No, not at all. Unless we analyze the thing, we will not be able to know the minute details of where the problem is, if at all it is there. These analyses will help the coach as well as the player to find out the shortcomings or shortfalls or the problems, whatever is inherent in that particular task. And on the basis of this, coach will have a, the remedial steps for immediate tackle of that particular problem. If it is done, we don't need to be getting frustrated after some time. So it should be a regular feature on the part of the coach to analyze, find out the problem, and take remedial steps for the effective improvement of any task or of the players. As a student, he listens, learns, and looks for innovative solutions. Now, as you all understand that the God has given us two years two eyes and one mouth. So two years we have been given to listen. Two eyes have been given to look forward and one mouth is given to speak it. So first we have to see it, we must listen wherever it is required patiently with due interest and then we are to speak. Before speaking, we must have a thought, what is to be spoken. We must speak only those aspects which are relevant to the purpose. And unless we have the patience to listen, we will not learn. 
unless we learn, we'll not be able to share. So as a coach, this is one of the most important quality to listen patiently, minutely, and then analyze what he has heard, and then what is to be spoken of. As I said earlier, principles of coaching and training remain the same, but the conviction differs, and hence the approach of two different coaches are different. The coaching as a profession is very challenging because always he is deliver, he is to deliver the goods and there is no scope for a coach to have a situation where there is no challenge. Challenge everywhere on the field and off the field. So whenever he steps in the field of coaching, his job becomes challenging because he is not only handling the human being, he is handling human being as individuals, they are to be improved, performance of each individual has to improve and at the same time their improvement must be combined and he must get the result. It is not an easy job, it is a very difficult job, but he has to do it. Knowing fully well that this is a challenging job, the coach is accepting or stepping into this field. He is always, or his movements are always been focused in the public eye. So he should be very, very careful in his movement, in his appearance, in his behavior, in his comments, everywhere. Very, very careful. He must not speak certain things which are harmful or giving a wrong impression about himself and his players or the team. He is a person expected to be with a great knowledge of life and a sports specialist as well. So he must have the experience of the life and that experience he must share with his players so that whatever the problem he has faced or he has tackled how. So he will be sharing with his players so that the players are not facing similar problems neither in their life nor on the field. He needs to understand the factors of coaching. What are the factors should be incorporated in his training program or in the coaching program so that the players are improving. And this improvement should not be only to say it is to be reflected in their performance as well. To know physical and physiological status of each and every player objectively. Now, he as a coach, he can collect certain information. As I said, he is a very knowledgeable person. So, by observing them only by his eyes, through his knowledge, he might be collecting or he might be knowing many things. Now, these are only subjective information. In fact, he should collect objective information as much as possible. Now this observation will be much more fruitful when a subjective observation is supported by objective informations because objective informations are correct, but that should be incorporated with his observation which he could visualize, he could see, he could observe in his open eyes. He also needs to motivate and help the players to cope with success and failure. Success and failure, it comes always. So he must educate his players to accept both success as well as failure. One should not be very, very excited when success 
or a team succeeds or demoralized when the team loses. He should educate his players. This is the part of our life. Sometimes we will win, sometimes we will lose. So whenever we are winning, we should consider this is only a temporary. Again, or we are to play much better in the next game. When we lose, we must be able to convince our players that whatever the mistakes we have committed, this is a lesson for us. So with that lesson, we must learn something so that we are not committing, repeating the same mistakes in the next matches. He must know the previous and present level of performance of each and every individual. That will indicate the present level of the players and the rate of progress. Why the rate of progress? Rate of progress will indicate the effectiveness of the training program. And for this, a coach must maintain the record. Now this is a very, very tedious job on the part of the coach. But if you want to do justice, every coach must maintain the record of the players. What he is doing, what is the level of the performance of the player, how they are progressing, or if somebody is not progressing, he has to find out the possible reasons and take immediate step so that he can overcome the problem. He must have a thorough knowledge of teaching and training. Understand the future developmental trend of the game. Unless we study the developments has been taken place in the past and if we fail to visualize what will be the demand, how the game will be progressed in the days to come, our preparation will not be sufficient enough to cope up with the demand of the actual match or actual competition in future. Now in the coaching profession, a coach has to understand the psychology of each and every individual. Unless we understand the child psychology or psychology of the human being, we will not be able to deal with the individual effectively. So as a coach, he should have different approach to different individual depending upon the psychological status of each and every individual. Now, he must also have the adequate knowledge of sports sciences. Sports sciences means maybe it is sports psychology, sports medicine, training method, kinesiology, biomechanics and so on. Why these things? The coach is not a scientist. He is not, should not be, or he is not expected to be expert in all these sciences. But he must have certain knowledge so that he can utilize that knowledge in the field of coaching. And that is why most of the time the coaches or the coaching about coaching, it has been asked whether the coaching is an art or it is science. In fact, coaching is an art based on science. That means the coach has to follow certain scientific principles, certain guidelines, so that he becomes effective. Or whatever the effort he has been putting in, it becomes fruitful. It becomes effective. Have knowledge of effective planning and organization. The job of the coach is diverse because he has to handle different type of players, different what do you call atmosphere, different type of tournaments and for this his most valuable weapon is his players. So what he should do in his performance? He first as a coach 
should educate his players. What he will educate? Different basic movements during practice. Movements required to be effective during the course of play. Explains the tasks, doubts if any, and the problems. These problems may not be on the field, might be his personal problem that also should be taken care of so that the players are not suffering during preparation and the game. If a coach knows all these things and he clarifies all his doubts or suggests him how to tackle a particular problem, then the player will also feel, yes, the coach is very serious, coach is thinking about me, coach is positive about my progress and he will be able to deliver the goods in a much efficient manner. He listens and understands the problem and difficulties of the players during training and also during competition. Motivates during training and competition, he inspires for better performance, encourages during the game, looks after the comfort of players and interest of the team, analyzes performance of the team to know the strong and weak points of the players. He congratulates when the players do according to his level of expectation and achieve success, shares joy when team wins a tournament or matches, consoles when the team loses or when the player is in distress condition. Now here, when we win, we must control our emotion. When he loses, again, we must control our players so that they are not demoralizing too much because this is the first step for preparation of the next match. So the coach must handle this situation very, very carefully. Every practice must have some purpose. If a practice lacks purpose or objective, that will be of no value. It will lead towards confusion and it will lack direction. The coach as well as the players must understand the effect of each exercise. Why these exercises? What are the elements that will improve? That is to be clear. In the mind of the coach, as well as the players must understand it. Only after that, the players will be able to carry out the movement effectively and they will realize, yes, this was the objective or this was the expected effect of that exercise and they have achieved it. If they are not achieving it, as a coach, we are to clarify it why it could not be achieved. A coach cannot achieve all the factors at a time. It is not possible. Nobody can achieve all factors at a time. So what happens? It forces the coaches to select the order of priorities. Which one will improve first, which will follow. If the order of priorities are correct, automatically the improvement will also be effective. The activity we selected keeping in mind the present state of the players and the cycle. You know every training has got its cycle and according to that cycle and the level of the players we must decide the activity. We should increase the degree of difficulties of a task only when we as coaches are satisfied that the players are carrying out the movement satisfactorily. Thank you very much.